Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I received my Fifine BM88. It comes with everything you see here, the manual, a 3 8 adapter, a 5 8 adapter, an Allen wrench, this really heavy-duty clamp, the actual arm itself, and an adapter that will sort of adapt this. I don't know what the standard is called. I'm sorry. It kind of resembles shoe, but it's not the same thing. It's round instead. But this adapter adapts this to a ball joint mechanism, which in turn has a quarter 20 screw at the end, as well as one of these common thumb turned knurled discs that you all have if you have any sort of mounting system whatsoever. The BM88 is a microphone mounting solution. It's a whole system for it. So this is really part of the Five Fine line. And they might hope that you have a Five Fine microphone, but you can use this with whatever you want. I have a Beacon. And I was inspired to buy this because Beacon just announced their microphone uh, low profile holder for the Beacon microphone. And I thought, that's really cool. I'll buy that. But then I saw the price and I thought, I'll look for alternatives. And so I did. And here we are. I got this on Amazon for Black Friday. It was like $42.99 USD. I doubt the deal is going to be going on by the time this video is posted, but its regular price is somewhere in the 50s. And you don't need one of these, honestly, if you just have a way to mount your microphone. I'll show you my current setup right now, and you can see what I'm working with. By the way, I'm filming from my overhead camera mount system from Neewer, which I don't think I have any sort of videos on this thing. I did just get it. Uh, but my, my whole setup is over here. Let's put my original microphone stand back there. And if you've been watching the channel, you've probably seen my mug on webcam with a big microphone in front of it. That's the Beacon microphone. This is the USB podcasting mic that I use, and I mount it on this thing here. And the Beacon, unlike a lot of other microphones, it's mounted with this sort of U-shaped bracket or a Y-shaped bracket, I guess I should say, because the bottom's inseparable from the U-shape, yeah. unless you can get a screwdriver in there, which why would you? And the bottom has got, currently got the, the 3 8 adapter from the Five Fine microphone arm in it, uh, because I was test fitting things and such. But this was right here, and this is fine. This is heavy duty, which is why I got it. I have a couple of these, actually. As you can see, I use one for my webcam. And this sucker does not move because these bases are very heavy. These bars just screw right into the bases. And then the bars themselves have an adjustable height. So you have a window of height. Now, my webcam is a little bit higher because I bought a bunch of these uh, quarter 20 to 3 adapters. And I just stacked them instead of adapting anything so that I could have a higher up window. The purpose of this, while it's very, very useful, is just to hold my microphone. Sometimes I have to move it out of the way because I can't see my keyboard or whatever. And when I do that, it shuffles really heavily across the desk and the translation of the vibration and sound go into the microphone and it sounds ugly and it looks ugly in waveform. Don't worry, I'm not scraping my glass desktop with this metal bit. It's got a nice felt, soft, cushy bottom and it's not going to damage my glass desktop. But this is a different principle. This is going to, I can't translate how heavy duty this thing is. It is so, so, so rigid. This is never ever going to need replaced or fixed or anything. This is just going to be, this is going to outlive everything else in your studio, this clamp. Uh, but this is going to mount onto a part of your desk, like let's say here on the plywood, and you want it to mount to a nice flat surface. You don't want it to mount to anything that has an overhang, nor uh, any sort of incline or decline on either the top or the bottom. Get on there. And it does have this really big, <laughs> ratchet which it does turn in one direction to make the thing go up and the other direction to make it go down but you can actually take this and move it down and ratchet it onto the surface if you don't have a lot of room to work with like i might be demonstrating here so i thought that that was super cool and i didn't even know that when i bought this so this is going to fit onto your desktop surface of choice you'll tighten it on there nice and good I'm very lucky that this actually goes the 360 degrees to tighten on smoothly, but if it didn't, I would just pull down, maybe, maybe if I had the room. And then we can put the actual arm, the body of the arm, into this hole, which we can also tighten that in after we get our positions finalized or whatever. We can use the included Allen wrench to make that nice and tight. I don't know if I will, because uh, I need the freedom to move this between my desktop and my tabletop gaming content. 
but this turns 360 degrees. This would go all the way around if it wasn't limited by the items on my desk. This part of the arm is interesting. This is what kind of makes the system unique. You can move this 180 degrees. And I know it doesn't look like it's 180 because it stops short going one way, but it goes over when going the other way, it actually touches. So it goes over 90 degrees this way, under 90 this way. And what's not being shown right now, because it's not obvious, is this has cable management. So these plastic covers on the underside of this section of the arm and this section of the arm pop off, which I haven't gotten them to do that yet because it takes quite a bit of effort. So I need to just make sure in the instructions that I'm not going to break anything and then do it. The wires, cables from my beacon, the USB and my monitoring cables from the headset, there goes my heater. That's going to lend all kinds of credibility to my high quality recording. Uh, those will just go right in here and be hidden away. You'll see a little bit at the joints here and then they'll come out this end and go to my PC, maybe, if I can make all the management work. That's kind of how I want to use it. I want to extend this out, have the microphone at the end and talk into it here. And then when I'm ready to record tabletop content, I'll swivel this over here and I'll be prepared. Something like that, not exactly that, but something like it, because currently I work with my five, my five, my beacon microphone here, and it's got a crazy long USB cable. It came with this cable, so it's already the ideal cable, but the cable is very long and I have to wrap it up around this thing, the side of the desk. And when I'm ready to move the microphone over to the table, I've got to grab this cable and unravel it several turns so that I have enough of the cable to go. And what I end up with when I walk away, if I leave the things set up here, is a mess of cable. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. And it has me cleaning things up when I come back or reorganizing. So it's not very lean, if you know what I mean. So anyways, we'll get that set up. And it, yeah, Hold on, you'll get to see what the beacon looks like on here. Okay, bit of a dry fit, bit of a test. This is actually the ideal amount of space that I would like this to be out so I can talk into my microphone, play my game. The camera's right up here in the newer clamp. And I think that would work just fine. Now, if I come back over here, things are not so good. Things don't work. I'm going to have to rotate the ball head back towards me. And I think that might be all I have to do, actually. So that might not be so bad. Hold on. Okay, that's pretty much all I had to do was just rotate this here. I got this repositioned just a little bit to turn one axis or the other. So when I loosen this, all I got to do is whoop on the other side, tighten it, move the arm over. Or I guess I'd move the arm over first and then test fit. With me having done that, I realize this is a heavy microphone. And the further away your weighted object is, away from the base or the core of what's supporting it, the heavier it's going to be quite technically. So if you were to, for example, hold something really heavy close to your chest, it wouldn't feel that heavy. But if you tried to hold it out away from your body, you would definitely feel that strain on your lower back or whatever you're using to support the weight of the item you're holding. The same is true for anything like this that's static. Uh, so this does have a bit of a sag to it. Now, that's about all it has, though. Right about there. So if I lift up on this, there it is, unencumbered. There it is, encumbered. Sorry for not getting the camera straight. This is a really cheap, off-the-cuff kind of video. And sometimes I like doing them, and sometimes they really help some other people out. So that's why I'm doing it here. I'm not using a bunch of fancy editing tricks. I'm not going to spend forever and a day doing cuts and adjusting the audio and all that. I just want you guys to see what this microphone arm is capable of doing. Now that I have that all set up, I will probably lift up on this a little bit just to get this to go back in just ever so slightly, and I'll tighten it. All right, and I tighten it just a little bit, but not enough to hinder its movement. So I'm still going to be able to rotate it over to the side and move this, and I should be good to go. But I have to say, that feels like it's going to be a better solution than what I've been doing. I should be able to unravel all my cord, route it underneath, and then through here and onto my microphone, and never again worry about shuffling it around, not tripping over it. Uh, I do use a pair of monitoring headphones that allow me to listen to the output of my voice and whatever game I'm playing at the same time. So I might leave those as they are 
connected to the microphone and, and not routed through anything, but just easy for me to unplug or move with the microphone as I go. But guys, that's about it. I hope that you found this useful. The instruction manual pretty much has everything that you need to know. This is a super, super simple tool. It can be really easy to put together and use with your setup. The only thing is it's supposed to be a low profile arm. Uh, so my monitor definitely goes higher. This definitely could fit under my monitor and that's supposed to be the use case for it. I'm, I'm using this a little bit unconventionally. You should actually be clamping this to the back of your riser or your desk and then have this underarm part come out underneath your monitor. And then this part will hold your microphone. And you have all kinds of ways you can set this up. Since this goes 360 degrees at this joint and this joint goes 180 degrees, the other axis, and then you've got this ball joint at the end. And then your microphone probably has its own swivel. So there's, there's lots of ways to set it up. But is it worth it? That's up to you. This was definitely worth my 40 bucks, I think. I'll have to use it for a few weeks, a few months, and come back to that later. But, you know, that was going to be the case no matter what I ended up getting. Uh, and I'll just see if it's a part of my workflow. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Comment anything you like down below. Check out my channel. I've got a bunch of other gear reviews, although they're not really super numerous these days. I always try to pick up things that you can get accessibly from like Walmart or Amazon. And I like looking at the lower end stuff because starting out cheap means that you're starting out at all. And maybe price is a hurdle for you or you're worried about perfectionism or whatever. Don't do that. Get the thing that you think you need or get the bare fundamentals at the very least and get started making stuff because the stuff that you learn while you're doing that will more than make up for whatever loss of quality that you're suffering from in your early days as making content or editing videos or whatever you're doing. Oh, so actually this was kind of necessary. I finally got this to pop off a uh, completely metal interior with metal bits where the thing snaps into place. It is difficult to get off but if you've got one of these little plastic pry bar deals and you just go along and you undo it from one side, it'll pop right off. You don't have to worry about doing both sides. Just do one side and it'll flip right off of there. And then this is where all of your cables will go be managed. You just got to do this twice. If you don't have one of these plastic pry bars for like repairing cell phones or whatever, or you can't be bothered to go buy anything from Walmart, you just need to get something very hard plastic and slip it under here. You can lift this slightly from one end, then slip in your thin plastic and just pry up until the first one pops upward. And then you can work your way down and pop the second one and then the third one to get that off of there. So, all right, this is the after video. There are no cables on my desktop. Everything has been routed behind the monitors and going into the five fine arm. The cable is routed into the arm, comes out the end, I've got the monitor cable connected to my headphones, currently wearing them now, and the microphone is set up to where I can do board game content easily. And when I'm ready to edit, do voiceovers, or switch over to video game content, this just swivels over here. And then I can turn this, and I can position this, and I'm done. I'm done. It's actually in the position it would need to be for me to make video game content in front of my webcam and my monitors and my setup and everything else. It's done, effortless. The desktop is still clean. I've got full visibility to my keyboard, to my monitor. My second monitor is only barely covered and that's because it is sitting directly on the de desktop because it's an Arzoba. Uh, and I could very easily put that on a riser itself because if you have a second monitor, it's likely going to be one of this type where it already has a stand and everything. So yours would probably be higher. So I, I anticipate absolutely no visibility problems. I've already done gameplay videos or podcast videos with this thing, and it actually makes the microphone show up in a more visually pleasing place in the video. So I'm really, really happy with this setup. It's effortless to swing it back over into place turn the microphone, turn the joint, and then here I am doing board game content. Before, this would be mentally a, an exercise and what do I need to do? What are the steps? Let me get all this stuff prepared. Let me shuffle and make a mess, skip a step, forget something. Now it is super easy.
super easy. Already I can tell you this is definitely worth the 40 bucks that I spent on it. I don't even have to wait as long as I thought I did to be able to tell you that. Everything is super nice, heavy duty, very well constructed. There is, like I said, a bit of a rocking to it, but you're not going to notice it because this is always going to stay in that lowered state, not in the higher one. Uh, and I may need to build something a little bit different than the riser that I have to be able to accommodate the sort of functionality because it kind of has a little bit of a sag that it brings to my construction. That's because I wasn't considering having anything like this with this sort of weight imposed on it when I made this riser. So, you know, that's on me and that's totally fine. It works anyway. Anyway, guys, I hope that this video served as something helpful for you. Perhaps you didn't know about this kind of low-profile microphone boom arm, and now you might consider getting it. I don't know. I'm not sponsored. I just want to make things easier on my fellow content creators. So with that said, thank you very much for watching. Comment anything you like down below, and I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, bye for now.